Here's a million dollar question. When does the brain turn on? Not like early morning or after you're assigned a task by your boss, but in general. We arrive into this world with a neural network already in place, since nature doesn't waste them nine months. A baby has no survival or other skills under its belt, and yet it carries some serious genetic knowledge on its tiny shoulder. Now look at today's robot. They don't have nine months to baste, another 18 years to move out. And still, in many ways, they're already superior to humans, while resembling us more and more every day. When does their brain start working? And what exactly is a robot brain? It's yet to be scientifically proven that an exact copy of a human brain is feasible. If that was the case, then we would literally stamp out all demographic problems. Can't stick a real brain into something mechanical either, even though Robocop says otherwise, or Crane 1 from Ninja Turtles for that matter, since you'd need not only nutrients and oxygen, but also ways to exchange information with the body. Thus far, such tech is non-existent. What is existent though is processors, sensors, neural network modules that make the robot perceive, plan, decide, and act almost like us. But that's not the way it's always been. What is this? Why, the lighthouse of Alexandria, of course, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world and first ever recorded robots. That's right. They're created in the 3rd century BC when the word robot didn't even exist yet. They were huge figures of women. Some showed wind speed, others its direction, or followed the movement of the sun and moon with their hands. They also quote unquote came to life and struck a bell making loud noises at night to warn ships of the dangerous proximity of ridges and rocks. In fact, there were many interesting inventions before our era. A mechanical maid who treats you to wine, the first prototype of a vending machine, which for a handful of coins, would pour holy water for you. These are indeed the prototypes of robots, automata, a complex of mechanisms that by their actions give the impression of human work. As we see it, it all started with the replacement of very simple actions in one or three phases and there was no question of anything even remotely close to the work of the human brain your mechanics. Later, wooden beetles, Leonardo da Vinci's artificial man, and many other technological marvels were created. But each of them adhered to the rule. The bigger the list of available actions and predefined algorithms, the better. No semblance of consciousness existed in robots, that is the ability to interpret signals and make decisions, up until 1966. That was the year that researchers from Stanford Research Institute created Shaky, the appearance of which may disappoint you slightly because it's very far from human. But don't judge a book. The first robot could think at a decision-making level using a combination of sensors, cameras, and basic AI algorithms. Shaky could basically move, see, plan, and do so on its own. For example, a user would say, hey Shaky, move the red box to the corner room. Our robot broke the task down into smaller items, analyzed the surrounding space, and without crashing into anything, fulfilled the request. And if something prevented it from doing so, it adjusted its route and actions. Due to the lack of financial support, the project was closed, but it played an invaluable role for the development of the very brain of robots. Shaky was the first to combine relatively simple mechanisms with basic level artificial intelligence. And here, we can indirectly draw parallels with us. If the human eye sees danger, it sends information about it to the brain, and from there, a command is given. For example, to dodge, run away, or attack. And get this, not even a decade later, Shaky's legacy took root. As early as 1972, Waseda University in Japan introduced the first anthropomorphic robot, Wabbit 1. <laughs> this precedent set a trend of humanization because machines can not only be functional, but also physically resemble us by interacting with the environment. For example, communicating in Japanese, using their hands to play keyboard instruments, and more. Tendency towards complexity, anyone? First, you dropped a coin and got water. Now, all of a sudden, you can learn Japanese. But humanoid robots, unfortunately, could not get out of the category of entertainment or information devices with a very limited scope of application. Let's jump straight to 2016 when the Sophia robot appeared, raising a new wave of interest in humanoid robots and making society believe that machines indistinguishable from humans are no longer a dream, but a reality. 
Sophia expressed up to 60 emotions, recognized speech, and generated answers to questions posed, often speaking at public events. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on which side you look at, her answers were prepped in advance or generated by a sophisticated chatbot that chose from a palette of template answers based on context and limited comprehension and sometimes gave information from online sources. Sophia was therefore only a demo in development, benefiting as a promotional project. No actual tangible skills or applications here, really. Sophia et al. didn't get far just yet, which in turn made researchers focus on filling up the physical shell with artificial intelligence and actually trying to build a quote-unquote brain. Assemble a modern robot yourself guide. Today, almost any machine has the following key components in its brain. Internal organs, or rather sensors, cameras, microphones, radars, scanners. These are imitations of our perception devices that analyze what is around, what is said, and what's coming at us. The center of the system is the processor, which is responsible for processing vast amounts of data coming from the sensors. The operating system plans actions, and what will physically put these actions into reality is the actuator. But the main stars of the show are the embedded artificial intelligence algorithms responsible for logic and learning. In an endless simulation, robots can model the situation, build solutions, make mistakes, and adapt to new conditions, and then apply the acquired skills in real life. Now that aforementioned components are becoming more and more accessible, so basically anybody can assemble a robot and teach it the basics that 50 years ago would have been scientific discovery. Here's a trivial but very clear example of how all these elements fit together. Item, bring a ball from the table into my hands. The robot's senses scan the space and identify the ball using object detection algorithms. It then builds a route to avoid obstacles and reach it. Actuators move the robot and its arm grabs the ball. If respective sensors give a positive response to the grasp, it then happily travels back to me. If the capture fails, AI algorithms analyze at what point the mistake was made and adjust the machine's behavior. Perceive, plan, act, adapt, plus feedback. In this simplified version, the workings of the brain look indeed not very complicated, but the most advanced inventions in the industry function in a similar manner. For example, Boston Dynamics Atlas, which we reviewed previously. Click the link in the cards to check it out. In the meantime, look at Atlas showing off its choreography. Its 28 joints and one of the most compact hydraulic drive systems in the world allow it to move this swiftly. Stereo vision, lidars, gyroscopes, range finders, and other sensors help it navigate through space. All this information is fed into its central processor, a very powerful chip that sends a signal to the motors. Although, contrary to popular belief, Atlas has no intelligence. Its software was written entirely by engineers who can control the robot with macro commands like run, sit, or step. Still, that doesn't deny the fact that from a technical point of view, Atlas is one of the most complex robots in the world and it uses the same conventional brain circuitry, which is supplemented and extended with more and more conditionals. An even more ambitious project is, of course, the Tesla bot, which processes data from eight cameras and 12 ultrasonic sensors. The human eye updates the picture 60 times a second, while Tesla bot can do it a thousand times per second which is a bit difficult to understand why, since the humanoid is designed to perform household tasks and help, like carry groceries, clean up, or cook dinner. Last year, the second version, Tesla Optimus Gen 2, has already seen the light of day and is lighter, more functional, and faster than its predecessor. The mass commercial launch hasn't happened yet, but the robots are being actively tested in companies' factories. All we can really lean on right now is Elon Musk's very own post on X, Quote, Tesla will have really useful humanoid robots in small numbers for Tesla's internal use next year, and hopefully mass production for other companies will begin in 2026. End quote. And to fulfill this promise, Musk will have to make a breakthrough in the brain of his robots. Allegedly in 1981, Bill Gates, once again allegedly, said that 640 kilobytes of RAM should be enough for anyone, which leads us to conclude that any predictions in the history of technology should at least be highly questionable. With the same confidence, early creators of AI believed that in a couple of decades, a robot would be indistinguishable from a human. 
But we've just turned a corner of the first quarter of the century, and despite impressive advances in machine learning, we're still a long way to getting a machine to look like man. Yes, they can perform millions of computational operations per second, count imaginable and inconceivable numbers, scan and paired human voices, but simple, intuitive tasks, contrary to the laws of logic, are much more problematic for robots. A machine can beat the world chess champion, but it can't outrun a kid or pick the right toy from the shelf faster than a toddler. This paradox is named after the scientist Hans Moravec. Things that we humans take for granted, such as walking on two legs, have been refined over thousands of years through evolution. The game of chess is ancient, of course, but it's no older than uprightness. It seems more complicated only because it's quote-unquote new to us. We have been thinking about strategies for just over a thousand years. That's why it's so difficult to teach a machine those skills that don't require conscious thought and are at high levels of automatic behavior. Moravec is not the only one who has shown that our brain scheme is not so universal. Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak gave us an even more transparent example when he gave the AI the simplest task that any human can do. Quote, You have to enter a random kitchen and after orienting yourself, Make a cup of coffee by yourself, end quote. Perception, planning, action, and on down the list. But unfortunately, such a task lies far beyond the capabilities of programming. A futile attempt to fulfill this test took place earlier this year. Figures oh, one humanoid robot was able to make coffee, except for random kitchen and using a coffee machine rather than a jezva, water, and a hot plate. Everything that Wozniak envisioned with a few asterisks. The inability of robots to cope with these tests exposes the main problem of developing their brains further. Is it possible to teach machines to act in the real world? And what kind of training data is needed to do so? After all, the famous Turing test is already obsolete. The main reason is that the test is not dealing with intelligence, but with the behavior of the system. In fact, it tests the understanding of human language. That's where the catch is. The traditional style of online dialogues is easily mimicked by large language models. And in 2014, the test was passed for the first time in its 65 years of existence using the Eugene Gooseman program. This fact stimulated the development of new tests to check the brains of these machines. So today, there is already dozens of alternative methods that every self-respecting robot should pass. In addition to the already mentioned coffee experiment by Wozniak, which has stumped quite a few processors, there is, for example, a mirror test borrowed from psychologist Gordon Gallup Jr., which is used as a survey of self-consciousness in animals. A distinctive mark is placed on an animal where it wouldn't be able to see it otherwise without a mirror. If the animal can recognize what it is, tries to touch the place where it's been marked, it can be considered to have self-awareness. The same principle has been applied to humanoid robots, and so far, no one has been able to get it done. Many machines came close, but it was not self-awareness, rather self-modeling. Another example, Winograd Schema Challenge. Answer the question. The prize doesn't fit in the brown suitcase because it's too big. What? is it. We understand what prize and suitcase are and the roles they play in life. A computer would need to possess general knowledge of the world and the ability to reason to figure this one out. All of these tasks set the bar high for modern robots, which developers have to strive for in order to teach machines not just to be human, but to be even better at certain tasks. From the figures in the lighthouse of Alexandria, we've come to Atlas and Tesla bot. What's next? The main challenge is overcoming the barrier that prevents a robot from functioning in real life. Communicating freely, cooking, navigating unfamiliar spaces, or showing off in the mirror without a library of available actions or prescribed algorithms. This is an incredibly complex task on the verge of, well, some would say impossible. Some of us humans have uh, indeed managed to accomplish a lot with machines. 
For example, GPT can handle natural language processing, supports complex dialogues, creates texts, and is able to form a context within a single chat. Surveillance systems recognize objects, faces, images, and videos. Robots can perform complex physical tasks, and autonomy is becoming a convenient and economical option from drones to self-driving transportation. Reinforcement learning has been successful in demonstrating the ability of machines to find solutions in games or strategic tasks, and to learn new actions by transferring their knowledge to the real world. But these individual successful developments are just not enough. Certainly, a variety of tests, experiments, trials, and new models from cutting-edge companies in robotics and artificial intelligence is progress in obtaining tacit knowledge for machines. But that path is long, arduous, and often futile. Perhaps there will be an alternative and a more comprehensive solution that can qualitatively accelerate the process of evolution of robots' brains. And the statement of OpenAI CEO Sam Altman will come true. He said, quote, Superintelligent AI can appear within a few thousand days, end quote, which is about 5 to 11 years, more or less. So if some innovative methodology does appear, it firstly will be able to correct the narrow-mindedness of modern robot intelligence. Secondly, it will solve the problem of knowledge transfer and adaptation to new tasks without additional training. Third, it will be less costly. Fourth, it will integrate robots into the real world with its complex and unstable situations, which are still a challenge for modern science. From routine chores around the house to solving humanity's global problems such as climate change, incurable diseases, and resource crisis. The countdown began on September 23, 2024, when Altman published his essay about the vision of cyber future. Have you read it? Quite a fetching read. Look into it and get back to this video. Do we believe Altman and hope for universal and intelligent robots? Let us know in the comments. There's more, but we're out of time. So like our video, subscribe to the channel, and check out our Instagram for more from the world of high tech. Yeah. <laughs>